Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Nikki Plays and today I'm going to be getting into Valheim. Now this doesn't mean this is all you're ever going to see on my channel. There will be a return to Star Citizen and some other wonderful games like Flight Simulator and X-Plane. But this is the game that's been pretty much tying me up except when I was feeling under the weather because allergies suck and I was playing The Sims 4. Yes, it was very dark days and I don't want to talk about it. So. I know I've been trying to make these comebacks over and over again over the last year, and they always just fall away. And the reasons are always the same. Until now, alright? So, until now, I was working from home because that's where my company had me working because it was not a good thing to send us into other people's buildings when they couldn't guarantee our safety. Things are a little bit different now. People are a little bit more vaccinated and although there's many states that are seeing upticks in COVID in my state there is not one so I'm back to work and I'm not working eight to ten hours a day in this office of mine that I turned into a studio that was turned back into an office and I spent so much time in. Yes I spoke in a circle there I apologize for that but it is one of those things that you spend eight to ten hours a day in a room and then on your day off when you're trying to make the best of things and trying to get yourself psyched up to do a video you look at the room and you're like no I just don't want to be in there no 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 yes it was kind of depressing and not only that but I was constantly having to validate me to other people because voices just like some of y'all say um, deep voice, but nonetheless, I feel better. I'm back at work and I've been making a lot of headway on updating things in this room. Um, things that have happened since November, I've got a Mac Mini with an M1 in it, so I could do better videos and hopefully have them rendered a lot faster. In my PC behind me, I have a 5800X, just a little bit faster, but also more able to stream and play at the same time and that's going to be mated with another Christmas present that I had received back in November by a very close friend and that's a Sony ZV-1 which is going to become my stream camera and I'm going to return to streaming and I've got like a mount and a dummy battery coming for that as I get those things done and a cam link that I ordered a long time ago finally showed up. It's right in my hand and that's getting installed tomorrow when all the cables come together and everything works again. So I've been thinking about how to make the return and Star Citizen's just a little crappy right now. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's crappy right this very second. I think there's been a lot of updates to it and I think that most of the bugs are probably out of 3.13. But nonetheless, I've been thinking Maybe I should just bring you into the game I've been playing a lot of, and that's Valheim. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring you into Valheim. So sit back and relax, and let's jump into the world. So with these Let's Plays that I'm going to be putting on YouTube, which are going to be associated with the streams that I'm going to be doing on Twitch, the Let's Plays are going to be post-commentary. The Anything I put up here from Twitch, obviously, is good, just going to be hours of gameplay. But I think that in the beginning, there's not a lot of exciting gameplay. You're not doing burial chambers. You're not doing crypts. You're not out there trying to attack villages of laughing goblins, which they call foolings. You're running around trying to build your first base, which you're not even going to live in for more than a couple of days. And that, to me, is boring. So what I want to do here is just talk about the game a little bit and what's drawn me in. I love building games. I love Viking Norse mythology. And here you have two of them brought together. And the game itself is like a new look or a new iteration of Minecraft. I mean, that's what I get from it, except you're not digging underground. I mean... It reminds me a little bit of it, but the graphics aren't great, the storyline's not done, and it's an alpha, like most of the games that I play these days. 
You begin by being dropped into this new realm. Like, there's nine realms of North, Norse mythology, but this is the tenth realm. It's Valheim. Your job is to kill nine or ten bosses, however many wind up in the game, and to take it back for Odin, who you do occasionally see watching on. I think this is Odin's Raven. Raven Wagen. And Wagen, I think that's how you say his name, is going to be annoying as you know what early in the game. So the first thing's out, you're dropped in here dripping wet, so already you have no stamina. So the first thing I do is I want to see where am I. Where, where am I on this map in this vast world? And I want to be as close to the water as I could possibly be. And this is the first start I've had in a really long time where I'm right next to the water. In fact, I wind up being on a little island. So the first couple of things I do is I run around the area that you get dropped in in and I try to pick up as much of the, well, as many of the things that are around here. There's usually mushrooms, berries, wood, stone. Those things are around here. And if you turn off vegetation in your graphics, which I don't do here, you'll see there's a lot more here and you'll be able to pick it up and make your first axe, make your first um, club and go out there and start being epic and killing all the little tiny essentially level one rats, which are called graylings here, and they're not rats, they're something else. Wagen's very interested in pointing us along the way. There is no way to turn off the tutorial, so if you've played the game over and over again, you start to hate Wagen. And I have played this game over and over again. I keep getting to a point where I'm going to kill Bone Mass and I start over again because there's either an update or I find that I've totally screwed up by making my base so big I have absolutely the worst lag in the world. So I do not build an axe to start off with. I just beat on trees and I get going and I find a place to call home. I beat on the trees, I upgrade my unarmored or unarmed skill. And then if anything comes up to me, I have a little bit more skill that I can beat them down with. And those are normally going to be this early in the game, a boar or a grayling. Now, the house that I'm going to build in this is going to be a 6x5. If I didn't like the start, it would have been a 4x3 or a 3x3, three three, and I would have gotten out of here as quickly as possible. But because I am so close to the water, and because throughout the game you have to come back to your start to lay down your trophies that you get from the bosses, I'm going to do a 6x5 here. And that's only because I'm right near the water. If I wasn't near the water, I, I would have ran to the water and made a 3x3 three three because I'm not going to stay here. But for this, I'm looking around. I'm going to try to find a good place to put it. And eventually, I'm going to come and find this place. So I settle on this little patch of land because I feel that it would be easily to grade. I find that I misjudged it just a tiny bit, but I am still able to put together the house. Now, I... I get annoyed with this, having to deal with the tutorial every time, and I'm going to say this. The tutorial is something that you definitely have to listen the first couple of times because you always miss something. But this deep into it, as many times as I've played since the game has been on Steam, I really believe that there should be an on-off button for the tutorial. Maybe I'm missing it. Maybe it's a dev command. I don't know. But nonetheless, we come over here and we make our little lean-to. And we have access to our bench and being able to build the first most important thing, which is our axe. And that axe and the hoe are going to be very important for us laying down our first house. I set out on just doing a little bit of clearing and trying to figure out how I could actually build over here. What's it going to look like? Where's the door going to go? And I settle on the 6x5 at this point. I'm looking at it going, yeah, I could probably build it here. I should have actually extended it a little bit further than what I did, but I, I, I make it almost in the perfect spot. Let's just say that. It should have been like one or two tiles over, and I call them tiles because I think everything's a one by one square because of nothing other than Minecraft, and this reminds me of Minecraft with much better graphics. So I level the land. And then I go out and get wood 
And then I start putting down my foundation. So I ran around a bit, went out, got some wood, and I came back here and I decided it was time to start seeing what I can build. And I'm still in this frame of mind. Am I going to do a 3x4, a 4x5? Am I going to do a 5x6? And I still think, I'm, I'm thinking out loud, what am I going to do? How am I going to make this? And I start to level it out. And this is where I make the determination that a 6x5 is actually going to be a good thing. 6x5 is good because you could build the fireplace inside where the 3x3s I do and the 4x3s I do. I build a fireplace on the outside. So it's kind of like a box with an attachment on it. And hard to explain, easy, easier if you were able to see it visually. And I decide that I'm not going to use the beams as the as the foundation, I decide I'm going to use the one by, well, the one, I, I guess they're one high, yeah, they're one high walls as my foundation. You could use anything as a foundation, but that's what I go through over here, and I start laying them down, going, all right, how am I going to do it? And, you know, what I really should have been looking at is the area behind it, so I should have started two tiles. That's the tile that I should have started the five by six. And that would have been two, but I didn't, and I wind up with something completely different. At the same time, this is when I realized I was on an island. And the island has mushrooms and berries and deer and boar, so it's really set up for a great start. And I, I really got into this, this start going, all right, this is a house. I, I might not be able to use it for long, but it's definitely something that I'm going to be able to come back to every now and then and, well, every now and then and be able to cook in it or sleep overnight in it, whatever it might be. So let's get on with this because it takes quite a few days for me to build this, um, two and a half to be exact. So it is dark outside, and as normal, I'm sitting over here trying to figure out how to get things situated. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to lay in the crafting bench, the workbench, in a place that it's not going to stay. I mean, that corner that I have right there is going to be my little kitchen or eating area, whatever you want to call it. But I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to put the crafting bench or the workbench over here for the time being because I could cover it over here and work on building out the rest of the house. Also, you can now see the fire going. And the fire is one of the most important things to put down in this game as early as possible because if you look in the upper right, there is something called rested. The resting bonus is one of the most important things for you to get early on. And if you were going to watch this as a stream, you'd be yelling at me because there were many times that I didn't have the resting bonus. And I was just out killing things and hitting trees and saplings to get more wood. And here I am leaving without that rested bonus. And what that means is that my health and more importantly, my stamina does not recharge as quickly as I need it to. So after covering my workbench, the next most important thing for me to do. So first fire, covered work, well, covered workbench, fire, and then it's very important to get your bed laid in because you don't want to have to work at night anymore. Later on, night's very dangerous. There are some things that are more prevalent out at, at night. Um, later on, you'll start seeing gray dwarfs out at night, even in the meadows, when you see graylings in the daytime and the starter area, that just doesn't happen. But in the grand scheme of things, sleeping through the night is important. So building yourself out a bed and maybe your first box is very important. But I do not have enough area over here to cover this in order for it to be considered a spawn point. So I have to work on that. So a few minutes later, we've got the, well, we have what's looking like a start of a beautiful house. And this is not a Viking-like house. I'd like to say my style is dragged out of a couple of videos I've seen. There's quite a few people that like to make Viking-looking longhouses and live in them. But to me, early in the game, when you're starting out, just make something that makes sense, that has enough room to put a few boxes, that has a room to put, be put a bed, and just put the first workbench that you have. 
And this is the type of house that I build, and it's more like something out of the Midwest. Think the Ingalls in Little House on the Prairie than it is something that you'll see in Norse mythology. But the way I'm looking at it is maybe we were actually Viking descendants that were dragged into Valheim to win it back. And it was actually the uh, 19th century that we were pulled out of and out of uh, middle America, out of the Midwest. And this is the building that we know. Build your own story. There's no story in there yet. It'll be there later. Right now, all you have to do is just kill things for whatever reason. But you're getting an idea of what I'm doing. This is going to be a big window over here, and I'm going to uh, actually enclose the window a little bit and make it look like it's glass. Um, it's a technique that I like to use. But in the grand scheme of things, here we are, and now we could set our spawn point, but we can't sleep. And that means if we do die, we're going to come right back over here. Haven't died yet, but, you know, there's always that freak accident of not knowing that you're out of uh, health and jumping and killing yourself in a jump or having a tree land on you or being at your last few hit points from taking on a couple of skeletons and then a grayling takes you out. Here I am trying to just bring this area down a little bit more, but it's not going to work. I'm going to need the pickaxe over here later on just to lower this corner to make it a little bit more viable. But you're starting to get an idea of what the house is going to look like. So let's move ahead a little bit and show you how far I get. So it's morning and I have finished most of the house and I'm over here building out what is going to be our porch. And I might extend this. I might just extend this a little bit more in the front. I'm using some techniques I saw online. You just lay in a post right next to it like this and then you'll be able to drop a post perfectly right underneath the first one. And I might do that over here, I might do that over there, but there's going to be multiple posts under here at some point, but right now, I just want to get the look and feel of the house done. And that means getting the porch and getting the roof done. So hopefully you're getting an idea of what this is gonna look like, how I'm building. So let's move on yet again. Well, this little piece we're going to start off inside. You can see I put my workbench in this corner, built a shelf, and I put the first upgrade over there. I'm also looking at the fire going, oh, i got to make that a little bit higher in the future. I will do that. I've got my wraparound porch done pretty much, and it's time to start thinking about the roof. Now, the roof is going to extend outward and downward, and I'm going to give you an idea of how that's going to look right over here. And I contemplate for a few seconds and go, well, maybe if I go this way, maybe if I go that way, and I decide, you know what, let me just build the roof out. And I have a couple of little things left to trim out later on. I got almost everything done before this ended, but I want you all to see how this starts to take shape and then how it looks in the end, because I think I did a great first build over here and this is not something that's going to stand the test of time it's not a place that i'm going to go to all the time but i think it's a good first base and i'm going to call this one alasar because it's the first place that we were in star citizen when the pu came out yeah a lot of people are like no we were at area 18 but that wasn't the pu that was just an area that you could run around in and that's what i'm thinking about calling this just alasar so you can see me laying in a couple of the trim pieces over here, and you're gonna get an idea of what it's gonna look like on both sides. And essentially I do this on both sides, and then I put the little peak piece in there, and uh, I'm, I'm thinking it's looking a little bit better. And once you get the porch on and the, uh, the supports up, things start to look really nice. And here's, yep, that just probably did a lot to make that look a li little bit better. And then I come on this side, lay these two pieces up, and then I get the other side done. So let's move forward a little bit and let's see what this house looks like when we have it all trimmed out. I think the house is looking pretty nice right now. That's the uh, stairwell that gets you up onto the porch. There's a door around the front, but what I'm trying to do right now is just to get these windows done. 
I've done the other two windows already, and this is one of the methods that I use. It makes it look like window panes. I like it because then I don't fear that things are going to be able to jump through it, which never happens, but you know, it's a fear. And I have everything up over here, so you're going to look and feel for it. But all that's left to do is to go inside this door and take a look at the inside. Now, I have upgraded the workbench, like I said. I have my nice little sleep area on the other side. And there's still a couple of elements that need to be done. I need to raise the fireplace just a little bit. And I believe that that's what I'm doing right now. So I went in there. And let's just get things done just a little bit better over here. So we're going to just raise it up. And then I'm going to go stand over here and just make it even to that point. That just makes it look ever so slightly better. Let's do a little depression in there. And then I'm going to drop in the two fireplaces and then finish up the look and feel of the fireplace. And this is something that I do often. I love doing lattice work in front of a fireplace because of the way smoke works in the game. It doesn't come through the holes. It's kind of weird. So when you do something like this and use the X's to make a lattice, it just doesn't come through. It's hard to line it up. You'll figure it out over time. But using the half posts or the half height posts is actually a great way to get it done. And it actually just lines up in there very well. And you'll see that I even, I even had one issue, which was I didn't have the posts up on the right side. So I figured that out that very easily just by looking at it a few times and then deciding, oh, I got to put those down there. And that was the last few pieces of trimming out this house. So in the next episode, we're going to go out, we're going to kill a bunch of boar, we're going to kill a bunch of deer, we're going to build some, we're, we're going to build some other elements or maybe just create a little bit more of a homey feel to this little mini house that I have. And then we're going to go out, we're going to kill Eikthir, which I think his name is Eikthir, I don't know how to pronounce it. But he needs to die because when he dies, we can then move out of here, go towards the Black Forest. And we can start doing things like raiding burial chambers, getting lots of bone, and then, of course, getting those amazing cores that are going to allow us to build our kiln and our smelter. And once we do that, it's the Bronze Age, baby, and we can start taking on bigger and badder enemies. In the meantime, we have a nice little box to call home. We have a nice little fire. We have a little area to cook. So I put two little cooking stations on the left one of these fires. The right one will be saved for later on when I bring a little bit of tin out here and copper, make a forge, and then build a cauldron. So if anyone ever comes to this house, if they ever join me on the server and want to start out over here, they'll have a place to cook. I think that's it. I think that's it for this episode. Like I said, next episode, we're going to go out. We're going to kill some things. I'm going to show you some wonderful, wonderful things to do to help you get lots of wood while you're killing the first boss, Eichthyr. That big old stag is a monster of a lumberjack. And if you use him right, you can get yourself thousands and thousands of wood. All right, folks, thanks for watching this episode. I really appreciate all you've done and for you all coming back here to watch my videos, even though I've been spotty at best for the last 13 months. But it's all getting better from here. With that said, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon.